Hey guys, it's Postbox Pat, and welcome back to a new video. And today I want to talk about my settings within Season 4. Now, a lot of people always ask me about my settings on Fortnite. So I want to go over these and kind of talk to you guys about the different settings I use and the way I change them up, and debating a few little concepts as well. I'm not going to go too much into using Builder Pro and the uh, Combat Pro because there's a good, long question about that that I am going to be covering in another video very soon. So stay tuned for that video. But for now, let's just talk about my settings as in general and not the controller layout I use. The controller layout itself can be different for everyone and it can be a massive debatable topic. I do have a video coming out very soon, which one's better to use. But for now, let's go into these and talk about exactly what I use. So for my sensitivity, I use 7.7. I do increase it over time, but because I haven't been playing Fortnite all the time, I have been struggling to get it any higher than 7.7. My aim is to get my sensitivity to about 9.9, so if you guys are playing Fortnite every single day and you want to get your sensitivity to the highest level on console version, try and aim to get it 9.9, slowly increasing it every 2-3 to three days, only slightly, and you will get there. When I say slightly, I mean the tiny little nudge like this. Every 2 days you keep nudging it up slightly like that, and eventually you can get it to that max point you want it to go. It won't let me increase it, mine seems to be good. Glitched out. Let's not save this. Uh, do you want to leave uh, without save? Do you want to leave without saving your changes? Confirm. But yeah, so that's what I'm trying to get out with that. I want to get that slowly up to nine by slowly increasing it. Now my ADS sensitivity and my scope sensitivity. I've always kept these at 0.65. Even increasing your controller sensitivity doesn't mean your ADS needs to go up. When you zoom down sight, you want to be able to move a lot slower. You don't want to be able to move too quick. You want to be able to hit your target at different ranges. And having that at set at 0.65 really help you guys out with that having it any faster you really want to when you zoom in you want to be able to move a lot slower so you got that more accuracy so i think 0.65 for myself is that perfect amount but you can find yourself like what whatever you've been playing on keep it on that maybe use the one i use it's really up to you guys but you could increase it all the way up to one if you really wanted to invert view isn't required unless you are used to that if you have been playing on invert view from a young age then it could be possible that you use this my friend rain hunters does use inverted y i think just because when he was younger he actually used to play with that and he got used to it and now he can't play with the normal layout that's fair enough and if you are one of them players this does not affect the gameplay at all or anything like that something i would like to mention is the way you hold the controller now personally i just hold the controller in a standard way with my two is it the first your first finger is it i think it is your first finger that's what you class it as your first fingers are on the triggers on the left and lt or l1 and l2 or l r1 r2 sorry on playstation i don't play playstation i play xbox but on that sense lt and rt and then just my thumbs on the joysticks that's the way i hold the controller but there is something called the claw this is where you put your second finger your longest finger on the right trigger and then you use your first finger hovering over the buttons so hovering over a x y and b or circle square and that and then you have your thumb on the joystick so you've actually got three fingers on that right hand side of the controller and your left's only got two this is what a lot of people do to play on console because you can jump and shoot at the same time very cool concept if you do get used to it you can play pretty well personally i've not really noticed much of a difference with it but i know a bunch of players who are a lot better than me who use this format if you guys can get used to that you will become an amazing fortnite player getting used to it isn't easy especially if you're very busy you have to be concentrated on the game every single day and kind of change up your playstyle and understand that you're not going to perform perfectly when you change to that concept now what else do i use well i will talk about the hud when we go into a game because hud size or hud scale is the size of your minimap and your inventory 0.72 is what i play on it's a perfect size for my tv depending on your tv size you can vary i think my tv is about 32 inches so it's not the biggest tv but i play on 0.72 because that's the best for me we have a load of other controllers as well show spectator count that's pretty depends on how you like to play if you do worry about being in the last few or something maybe turning that off could be quite helpful because you don't want a lot of people watching you but if you're not really too bothered it doesn't really matter sprint can Cancel reloading off. Now, this is debatable because sometimes you're running in the storm and I wish I could sprint and reload. I personally keep it off because that's what I'm used to since the game got released. But if you are one of them people that consistently dies in the storm, this could be something that you'd want to turn on to get that running pretty easily and get that easy victory royale. Now, moving on to the next thing, tap to search to interact. That's pretty cool. I personally hold it down, but it's really up to you guys. Again, I'm used to playing the game from when it was first released, so I keep that off. Toggle targeting. Now, this is something set set ranged weapons targeting to press action instead of hold action. So that's actually interesting. That's when you zoom in and you don't have to hold it down. Personally, I'd keep that off because on most video, video games, you're going to have that 
as like the main setting and you're not really going to be toggling you zoom in and toggling it off so i'd keep that on basically what it's trying to say is when you zoom in with a weapon it stays zoomed in until you click the button again this isn't something you want to really be using it's the sort of thing that'd be handy on like pocket edition but on that console it's really not handy uh, auto equip better items that's interesting i have that on but it just doesn't seem to work for me that often but it makes sense better items as in like if you had a rare shotgun say you had a common shotgun and you find a rare one it should auto swap but i've never really seen it work for me but i just have it on just in case because it's a pretty cool one to use aim assist now that is something that you've got to use on console it helps your controller aim on a target it allows you to kind of follow the target a little bit better you have to use this if you're playing on console on pc it isn't so much the aim assist and on pocket edition the aim assist is massive if you played pocket edition fortnite battle royale your aim assist will be so it's like almost your control auto moves for you on console it isn't that much but you can tell it definitely especially if someone's camping in the bush it's an easy way of locating them what else have we got here reset building choice well reset building choice is something you will want to keep on because i personally prefer to always go to that wall as soon as i go off it but again it is opinional opinion <laughs> opinion based sorry uh, if you want to use that or not turbo building now we're getting into the building stuff. I don't really want to talk too much about the building stuff because I'm going to bring in a separate video out on that. But turbo building is something I do really like to use. But depending on what setting you're using, it can be difficult to use. Let's not talk too much about that. Basically, turbo building allows you to place a lot of items very quickly. It's debatable and it's something I'm going to be making a video on separately. Auto material change is a must. If you're running low on materials, it'll auto change for you. Make sure you do have that set because that one is very, very handy. Controller auto run. Again, depending on what you have been brought up with video game, with like video games and stuff like Minecraft and things like that, auto run could be pretty handy depending on if you've been a pocket edition player for a long time. But if you like to control your running yourself, I recommend keeping it off. Personally, having it off gives you the opportunity to kind of change and like switch or gives you the options to switch from running and like normal walking, should I say, rather than having it auto run for you all the time. We've also got all uh, allow cross platform parties that again doesn't really matter it just allows you to put in different servers and stuff vibration on that's obviously if you're not using very good batteries you'll probably want to keep that off but if you've got rechargeables should be sound with that uh, you've got record replays on and record large team replays now this actually does reduce your performance in game but it's not really very noticeable so i will keep this on at all time because i do like to increase my performance uh, which may improve performance allowing disabling it may improve performance but i do like to increase i do like to increase my performance but i do like to have that extra like gameplay footage so i can take that little knock of not com i don't know what to say not like joining with them not going with it like i keep it on just because i want to be able to record them large team gameplays if i want them in the future so that's why i keep it on because i'm a youtuber obviously but if you don't record videos make sure this is off because you're probably not going to want to save the gameplays and you'll get better performance slightly brightness and stuff i keep it at 0.6 default is 0.5 i just like to have my brightness a little bit brighter then we've got settings on the audio and stuff mine are all standard apart from i turn the music off because it does bug me a little bit uh, the color correction very useful for anyone who has any difficulty seeing different colors i think it's an absolute awesome setting and definitely would recommend using that if you need it then you've got obviously the control layout i don't want to go into that too much and the last one's just your account links so that's it for all the controller stuff so let's pop into a game and show you what guys what i mean by the hood and show you guys exactly why you should adjust this and what it does with advantages. Everything else really can just be shown in the main menu. This is something I wanna show you guys in game because it's a question I get all the time. Actually, hold on, okay, I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll show you the HUD and then I'll back out the game because I wanna talk about skins as well and bat blinks. And I will go over that as well, why it is technically part of the settings because it does say skins and battlings do not give you a competitive advantage. Same with emotes and stuff. And I don't agree with that. And that's another video entirely. But, you know, it is something that can be some debated. But skins and battlings are just, they just feel useless. And the reason I'm saying that is when you zoom in with a battling, it blocks your screen a lot. So let's just dive down anywhere. <clears throat> I'm not too sure where we should go, really. I'm probably thinking... I'll go up here because up here I've got a better chance of getting access to what I'm trying to show you guys. Hopefully no one follows me. I want to show you guys the HUD. So as we dive in over here, I'll be able to show you guys exactly what I mean by this. Just skipped it a little bit there. I just need to do a big cough. But as we're going in over here by the little crater, I will show you guys exactly what I'm trying to get out with this HUD size. Hopefully if no one kills me. Can we go somewhere where no one is, please? 
Should we just, I reckon we just go by this tree over here because it isn't very important. It doesn't matter. And then we can just jump off afterwards. Uh, I don't like to get all these losses, but oh well. We're just sacrificing these losses. It's not the end of the world. But we'll go down over here and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. I think we could do with a weapon actually so I can show you what I mean by the battlings and stuff as well. So I don't think anyone's around here. I haven't got my audio on, so I hope no one's around here. Here you go, we've got a weapon as well. So that'll do. We'll just grab these and then we'll. Oh, there's a guy right here. What is this guy doing? Oh no, I've got no audio. Can I take this? Is this guy going to kill me? Oh, no, he didn't. I got very, very lucky there. I had no audio, so I was just struggling to hear what was going on. <laughs> As if that guy was just stood right there. But anyway, let's go to the coast over here. Luckily, we got that kill in there. That was very, very lucky because this is a live commentary. And I didn't want that to happen at all. We've got two minutes till the storm, so I can demonstrate what I'm trying to mean by this. So what I mean by battlings and skins and stuff is when you zoom in, the bat pack actually blocks a little bit of your view. A lot of the skins have a big head. For example, my skin has a very big head. When you're crouched and stuff, you can see it kind of blocks your view. Having that is something that you do want to avoid in Fortnite. And personally, I don't like to have that. Uh, but, you know, that's why I don't use bat blings. My skin, I'm not too bothered about the hair. But I know there's a lot of skins out there that can take up a lot of the room on the screen. What else have we got? Well, let's go over to the HUD settings or the HUD scale. Because this is an important setting that I want to mention to you guys. You can change this. And for example, if I put it as 1.11, look how small my inventory goes. Look how small everything is on the screen. Obviously, that's well too small for my TV. Unless you were playing on like a cinema screen or something. You probably wouldn't need it that small. But say if I have it on like 0.5, that's like half the size. Definitely an all right size to use. Probably a little bit too small for me on the map there at the right corner. Uh, so let's put it back up to 0.72, what I'm used to, or 0.70. There we are. That's an all right saying. 0.72 is just perfect for me. I've played around with it a lot, and that's what comes in my perfect bracket for my TV. But it depends on how far you sat away from the TV and stuff will depend on your distance. You look at that. That's the size. That's the size I use. And then if I change it to the actual full size, like look at the full size, uh, you can see the difference. So that's the actual standard size. Everything just feels so much bigger. It just kind of just the screen just looks a lot. It looks better, but you can't see as much on the battlefield. And that's why I keep it as 0.72, allow me a bigger field of view. That's what's key in Fortnite. If you guys have that big field of view, you guys are going to be able to have access to be able to, like, I don't even know how to describe it. You're going to be able to just view people at all different angles and different ranges and be able to take them out a lot easier. So that is why I keep my HUD scale at 0.72 so that is exactly why make sure you guys have got it set to that let's quickly reset so i can get out of here and die quickly and head back over to the main menu and describe what i was trying to get at with the skins and stuff and why obviously you can see the idea here in game now with the battling and stuff but let me show you guys some stuff when we go over there so this will be the last thing i'll show you guys for this video but let's drop in there let's get the storm to kill us come on come on come on is this done oh, it's only doing one dps all right we'll just jump off over here it's fine but in the main menu, you've got a variety of different skins and hammers and stuff. And it's all about being able to see. Field of view is something very key. It comes under, obviously, the HUD as well. I still need to save my HUD settings. I forgot to change them. I'll change them in a minute. But it's all about knowing the distance and knowing exactly what you need to know to be able to get that victory royale. If you've got all this under your belt, you're going to have a better chance of getting that victory royale. So what I mean about on here, well, each skin is actually a different size. The hitbox isn't different. I've tested that, but the actual size of the skin does take up field of view on the battlefield. Understanding the difference between each skin and knowing why and which one to use. For example, you look at the Dark Voyager. This skin's actually quite a big skin. It's got a big head and it's very bright. You're going to be spotted at a lot of different distances. Could be something you want to use, maybe to attract attention, but I wouldn't recommend it. What other skins have we got? Well, the smaller skins are the ones that are quite common. Elite Agent, a very thin and smaller skin. Hard to see at distance, quite camo-y, quite an awesome skin to use. You see a lot of people playing this skin for that reason. You've also got John Wick, quite a small skin. Let's take the bat bling off. I recommend never using a bat bling if you're going competitively. Personally, I don't use one, but it's all personal preference. Uh, but... John Wick, another small skin. There's a lot of small skins. The new skin on here, Trailblazer, if it'll load in, it's not loaded, there you are. That is a really small skin and an awesome camo one. Maybe not as camo as the Elite Agent, but almost there. You've also got a few other skins as well, which can get in that box. Personally, I wouldn't say skins like this would be in that box. Nightlight is an awesome skin, but very glowy and something that I don't play with very often because of that reason. But I did buy it because I did really enjoy the skin. Dark uh, Rust Lord, quite a big head, wouldn't recommend 
There's a bunch of other ones as well. Uh, for example, Raven, he's actually bat bling. It's so annoying. I would never use it because just because it's such a big bat bling and it covers your screen so much. We can check out a few of the bat blings and sizes. The shields are probably the smallest ones and maybe the new one with Amazon Prime. That's actually a really small one as well. True North. It's not bad at all to use True North. It's quite a good one, but all the other ones are quite big. It's all opinion based, but I like to keep that field of view as open as possible. You've also got that when it comes to pickaxes as well. Pickaxes, the best ones to use are the smallest ones. This one here, Tenderizer and Trusty Number 2, obviously my favourite too because of their actual light. I just think they're the smallest two you can use. ACDC does come up there, but the lightning can be off putting sometimes. And the standard one's quite small. I really do like these because the head's really small and the grip's really wall, like <laughs> wall, <laughs> really small. They're really useful to use. And this one here actually comes up there as well. Uh, that one's a pretty small one, but these two definitely are the best two to use in my opinion, just because they're small. Currently, I'm using this one, uh, but I will I switch between them all the time. I have them on rotation. Uh, uh, them two, I'm going to put them on rotation. Can I put them on rotation? I think you can. If you favorite them, you can select them on rotation. There we are. I've got that on rotation. So if I turn that one, if I select this one, will it rotate? Uh, I don't think I'm going to get, it's going to give me the option to do that, is it? Is it going to give me the option to do that? Possibly will. I don't know what's going on here. What does it say? Uh, between, oh, favorite there we are so we'll have that on there and it'll rotate between them two them two are my favorite but yeah that's why i use all them i recommend doing it for you guys make sure you do check this out it is a very important thing to do if you want your friends to improve at fortnite as well do share this video with them if you're playing in squads or something it's a really useful video and it spent me well i spent a lot of time planning it and talking about all the different concepts i actually consider when understanding what settings to use to improve to become a pro at fortnite hope you guys have enjoyed today's video don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe if you are new around here stick around for daily fortnite content and once again, this is Postbox Part, signing out.